part. And you may use uh, any tool, uh, Tableau, Power BI, Looker, uh, or even Microsoft Excel. Um, and uh, for the data, art, and storytelling nomination, you, you may apply existing project, uh, which was uh, published uh, in the current year. 2022 and uh, also make your uh, poll your research and uh, uh, develop uh, develop it from the scratch and uh, we have uh, two nominations for professionals uh, uh, it requires a submission fee because our honored experts will review your projects and also we have uh, student nomination who don't uh, pretend to the final global uh, prize and prize and we also include such educational tracks uh, or for beginners to help you start and we have significant prize fund and uh, our timeline so we uh, we accept projects until uh, the middle of December and after that after the December 15th we will uh, select the best project uh, and uh, we will have award ceremony in February February 9 in Istanbul at the Eurasian database conference and uh, announce the winners of this award and uh, now we have some um, submitted projects they are good enough uh, but also there are a lot of things to be improved and this session uh, this critical session, uh, but uh, also positive, positive critics, uh, I hope will help uh, our uh, participants and help all of you to understand which, which, what kind of mistakes were done and how to improve it. And uh, let's let's start and uh, meet our honored uh, experts. Today, uh, I have two guests, uh, Veronika gavarska Tuvonek and uh, Denis Eksoy. So turn your microphones and uh, uh, introduce yourself. So I can start. Hi, everyone. Uh, first Hi, of all, Alex, uh, thank you very much for letting me be here and letting me be the part of Data to Speak. My name is Veronika gavarska Tuvonek. I'm data visualization designer, writer, and trainer. So that means that my everyday job uh, focuses on translating business needs into BI solutions, as well as uh, providing some trainings and you know, sharing my knowledge uh, about the data viz with others. And uh, yeah. If you like, you can uh, find me on Medium and hopefully we will meet in person during the workshop I'll be conducting during the conference. And not to say too much, but it will be related to incremental improvements that you can apply to make your work even better. Hi, you, Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. I'm Denise. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Denise Aksoy. Uh, I'm from Istanbul. And I'm happy because uh, the conference will be held in my uh, own town, so uh, it will be easier for me to participate. And I also thank uh, Alex for inviting me uh, for this session and also uh, to the conference. And I'm a trainer for 12 years. Uh, I give trainings on effective presentations and data viz and dashboard design. And also uh, for the third year, I'm giving consultancies about uh, data with design and dashboards uh, in the Turkish companies. And also uh, today I'm going to say some uh, words about the, the World Cup uh, dashboard. And then uh, we are not going to say it all uh, because they are still be in the contest. So uh, we will show and we want to say well, what is uh, so visible. And uh, I hope it will be uh, useful for everyone. So I'm giving the word to Veronica again. 
Okay, okay so, so let's start. Yeah. So the first dashboard is. Um, let me hope you can see my screen. So the first dashboard is by Karolina Grodzinska. Uh, it's uh, Women in Data. And it's a part of data ton. Uh, and what I like about that is that- uh, so, Renika, could you enlarge? Uh, your... Even more, okay, yeah. Yes. It's quite a big dashboard, but yeah. So I'll be scrolling. Hope now yes. it's better. So uh, yeah. what I like about this dashboard is um, the, the story, the data itself is very interesting. And it was collected by the, the person who created the, the dashboard. So um, the, the topic is very, very interesting. Uh, and I mean, it's nice storytelling because we are starting with the brief introduction. We have some summary numbers, we have some then details with the comparison because then the data is uh, split. Um, okay, basically the, the dashboard uh, is showing the, uh, the change of the uh, perception of the companies after applying some changes. So the, the main focus are companies and here is the, the split by the companies and the, some categories uh, by which it was analyzed. So, uh, we have the, the overview, then the split by the, the countries, then the um, analysis by created categories. Then again, uh, we, we focus on some uh, categories of, um, of companies and the companies itself. And then at the very end, we can see the, the change of the company perception. So it's like going from the top and uh, we, um, we're getting more and more details, but we are never losing the, the overview because we, we have the, um, the summary, some statistics. Um, as well here, we have the, the whiskers. Um, and here we also can uh, compare both to the um, linear change and to other companies because we can, we can switch the company and still, um, see um ah, okay so i think maybe that was changed because uh, when i was testing this um the um, the scale didn't change which, which i like because uh, it allowed to to compare uh easily across the different companies because uh, the the point of reference uh, didn't change so um yeah so this is the the thing i would reconsider so Fix the uh, fix this case so it's always the the same uh, the same one, and uh, what else? I also like that there is a dedicated page uh, on a GitHub uh, explaining how the data was collected because, uh, as I said, it's um, it's the measure uh, created by the the author, so it's nice that there is a page. What I would also reconsider is maybe the placement because um, it's not that. Um, you know, the, the typical KPI you can come across. So it needs to be explained. And I would expect it to be explained at the place where I um, start reading about the, the data. So probably somewhere closer to the, to the beginning. Mm. Also, what I think might be slightly improved is the readability because um, right now that text uh, is easily mixed with the with the chart itself so um, for example this paragraph it can be uh, easily missed out uh, first of all and second of all it look it looks like um, mm, some comment to the to the um, chart maybe some additional information not the, the summary of of it mm. also the color might be used a little bit more consistent. So there is a pink, but this is the, the summary. And here is the same pink used for one category. Uh, same here, it's, it's the same pink, but used differently. And we have a couple of greens, couple of blues. So 
I would maybe put a more meaning to it. Mm. And also some color redundancy. Uh, I would really think if there is a need to, to color code each and every um, um, range of the, um, of the rating. Mm. So maybe, yeah, not to be too harsh, uh, this is my starting point if you would like to add something. I can leave it, I mean, I can share the screen or you can share it if you like. I think uh, you have already told uh, what I've seen too, uh, but I can just uh, give a comment about maybe uh, some Gestalt principles can be also used here, just like uh, the uh, which is very close to the uh, to another part. Which part uh, is close to another part? Then they have a similar meaning. If there are uh, some uh, white areas between, then we understand that okay, there is a difference between these two parts. But here I can uh, I cannot easily see some uh, white areas. Uh, in the dashboard, which makes me uh, understand the parts uh, of the whole. Uh, maybe it can be used. Uh, and also maybe uh, I'm not uh, asking for any, um, how can I say, any uh, outlines uh, out of the charts, uh, but using a white areas, uh, I mean, in, in these two uh, scatter plots between the two scatter plots and uh, there is no uh, white areas between so it makes me uh, understand them a little harder so uh, I guess that was the the only thing I can add to your comments Veronica Thank and maybe you. also the alignment because here yeah. is another section so it, it yes. could be aligned yes yes for sure. Yes, looks that they it looks that they have have the same uh, x uh, scale. Yes. And the yeah, same exactly. way and here. Maybe another small thing. I mean, because the um, the measure it's not self explanatory because it's quite unique created by the author. Maybe some tooltip with the explanation to you know have it. Uh, right uh, where it's needed and don't have to jump between the, the dashboard and the, the glossary because probably no one will. Okay. Yes. And uh, how to understand this whisker boxes? So, uh, is it my turn? Um, so, if we we are finished, okay. So, to sum up, um, give me a second. So, I see there's uh, there's a good enough for the first release, and uh, as uh, usually happens, you need to make two, three releases. To, to get a feedback and uh, improve work with uh, yes, Gestalt principles, principles, colors, alignments. Uh, and uh, here I have like uh, some, I have um, impression not, not to criticize, but uh, some uh, statisticians works with Jupyter no, uh, node parts like, uh, like their scroll, how do they analyze? So uh, text something, put a chart. Now they continue uh, their analysis. So it looks like a, a log of analysis process, but not the final uh, result, not uh, the final story, uh, not, not the story. What? That's what uh, uh, need to redesign this project, in my opinion, to make to make a story. At the current moment, it's it's a draft of story. That's my opinion, and uh, let's uh, go to the next project. 
from the uh, another field. Yeah, very deep field. Yeah, a very managed field. So let me share my screen. So I guess uh, mine is uh, based on a good topic uh, because as we are watching a current running one, and I'm going to uh, make some comments about the dashboard on uh, the World Cup's history. Uh, I'm saying history because uh, this dashboard doesn't contain the the games, the matches of uh, the current World Cup. So it ends with the last one uh, in Russia. And okay, the, the screen starts with the language selection. Uh, so it's Portuguese or uh, English. Uh, I will, uh, I can comment on this, I guess, on the first screen because yes, uh, the language selection is good, but I'm not sure if we should uh, make the, the reader select it every time, or uh, I'm not sure if we want to uh, give any uh, information before the selection. Uh, maybe we can make uh, with an active selection uh, selected language, and then we can give permission to our reader to reselect for another language. Uh, so uh, instead of using a, a selection page like this uh, at the first sight, uh, I would uh, recommend to use the dashboard instead. And so as I don't know Portuguese, I have to uh, select English. <laughs> Okay, I guess I should refresh it. It was working until I was going to... Uh, <laughs> while, while it's <laughs> loading, <laughs> uh, usually I see the correlation that yeah. uh, story, okay. uh, storytelling uh, projects are visualized with uh, Tableau and uh, mm, business dashboards uh, usually visualized with uh, Power BI. And mm -hmm. we have uh, an interesting example of applying like a storytelling approach uh, to, uh, to, to a dashboard. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, it has come now. Uh, mine has uh, two tabs. It's the, the general uh, page and also the versus page uh, where you can select, uh, see the matches between the two selected teams you, uh, you see. And also the general page. Um, as, the, as I guess, uh, I can start with the guest start principles first. Uh, the partition of the dashboard uh, is which I liked the most, I guess, uh, because uh, the, the parts are so visible and I can understand uh, which is connected with the others or not. And also uh, the selection uh, with the flags, it's also good. And when I go over them, I can just easily uh, see the tooltips. If I can't recognize the flags, then I can uh, easily read from the tooltip and find uh, the which country I want uh, as the home uh, country of that World Cup. Uh, but what uh, should be considered, I guess, first, uh, this now, the all uh, of the World Cups is selected now. But when I select one of the World Cups, and like we can select the last one in Russia, and now the statistics, uh, they are refreshed uh, for the Russian uh, World Cup. But uh, I cannot see what I can why, what I selected. It's not so visible here now that uh, these statistics are only for Russian one. 
uh, it should be or it may be uh, written uh, at the top because we have the place here, uh, we could use it. Uh, so it would be more visible than uh, just the the, the little the gray uh, background here. So uh, this can be also uh, processed. And about the the other ones, what I can see, okay, this one at all. Uh, the the most uh, um the uh, the part which takes the most attention uh, is the point table uh, which I can say uh, because of the background color uh, but I'm not sure if this is the most important uh, one here because as we know and it's not the uh, how can I say it's not the point table it's not the league. Uh, the World Cups is not a league, so uh, it's not so important who got the most points uh, in the total of that World Cup. Uh, it, the most important thing is uh, the winner teams here. So I should be. Uh, I think uh, this part should have get more attention than the uh, the total league table, and then uh, more of that. Uh, I can say that um, the country names in the table uh, are not uh, consistent because when I select all, uh, yes, I can see all the names of the countries are in English, but when I select one of the uh, one of the flags, so one of the World Cups, then uh, they are turning into Portuguese again. I guess it's a bug uh, in the dashboard. And more, I can say, uh, in in the whole uh, dashboard, uh, I'm seeing uh, some parts which uh, the texts are written in capital letters. Uh, capital letters are good for headers, for titles, yes. Uh, but for the data, it can be uh, a little much more uh, if it's not so uh, convenient for that data. So, okay, uh, for the titles of the parts, partitions, it's okay to use the caps lock, uh, to use the capital letters. Uh, but for the names, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess it would be uh, maybe in the, the normal form uh, instead of the capital letters. And then also about these goals partition. And I should say that uh, we are already using uh, the bar lengths uh, to compare the amount of the goals uh, for the players. Uh, but if you use color uh, also, then it can be distracting for the readers. Uh, what I offer always uh, in, in my consultancies, uh, use only one type of comparison for your data. For the goals, we are using the bar length, so you can use color to uh, explain something else. Uh, for this chart. Uh, that's also what can be uh, processed for this uh, dashboard. And also uh, in, the, in the whole part, uh, the, the whole size of the text, uh, uh, the size of the text of the all parts are the same. And uh, there is no usage of bands. Uh, we, we call it the biggest numbers. Uh, maybe uh, we could see something uh, enlarged to make it uh, higher in the hierarchy of these data. Uh, what you uh, think the most important ones, maybe in the winner tables, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe uh, the scores in the matches, I'm not sure, but 
something should be uh, higher in the hierarchy so we can understand that okay this is the uh, more important part of this data but if you use uh, the same height for every text then every text is uh, makes it uh, in in a lower level so uh, usage of uh, different text types can be also uh, considered. Um, uh, when we come to the this uh, matches site, matches part, uh, when I clicked on a, a match, uh, you see this time the selection is uh, vice versa, uh, because here what I selected was in gray, but here, what I selected is uh, still the same, but the unselected ones turn gray. Uh, so this should be also consistent uh, in the whole dashboard to make me understand what I'm doing most. Uh, but I liked that uh, when I clicked on an, on a game here, uh, then the uh, these two. Uh, statistics, these two data parts are refreshing for that game. And also, uh, it made me think uh, maybe the uh, these, um, how can I say, uh, they could be located maybe vice versa uh, because when I select this one, uh, I'm, I cannot understand uh, that these two parts are going to be um, highlighted and are going to be refreshed, going to be uh, filtered for that game only. So uh, the the general uh, selection, uh, how can I say, it? the selection types and what we do uh, when a data is selected. Uh, should be considered in whole of the dashboard, I guess. And that's the, the other one I'm going to say. Uh, because so I may, I may I add... Like, uh, sorry? Uh, so I, I tried to uh, add my opinion that yeah, uh, yeah, mm, there are a lot of pop-ups, a lot of uh, advanced features, but... Uh, they are um, not uh, not clear for yeah. the, from the first view, and they are not uh, tuned to the um, analysis process or uh, and uh, to the story. What we have, or how, what, what is our basic way of uh, drilling uh, down or drilling through, and I move from bottom on top back on bottom or back panel or something uh, like pop-up window yes no. actions are not consistent consistent uh, yeah. in this dashboard right so you i mean if you click on one table it, uh, other will be updated but not all of them and if yes. you click in somewhere else nothing will happen so yeah that's also a good point. Now, uh, the only stadium we see and the only goals we see are all filtered for the game, but we, uh, we cannot understand it now. Uh, it should be very bad, it should be better uh, if we see what's active, what's selected. Uh, it may be written on top, it may be, maybe uh, we can see it more visible that we selected it. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, they, he or she, I'm not sure uh, the, the name, so uh, she, he may, she may consider it again, uh, how to show us what we are drilling down or uh, what we are selecting. And moreover, as Alex said, uh, this dashboard is good, but it's, uh, I guess it's only exploratory. Uh, right now. Uh, I couldn't see anything explanatory side. Maybe uh, there can be some additions, there can be some text added uh, in, in some selections, in some areas. 
which we uh, see some insights because these are only the data, but uh, I guess uh, there may be some additions which we would like more. And this, this, uh, these all things are told about uh, word, uh, about the general tab. It's also same uh, in the versus tab. And here we have the selection for two teams. It's good, okay. And uh, you can uh, select two teams here. Uh, I hope the, the background picture will come, yes. And uh, now, uh, when you select the two uh, teams, the two countries, then you have the results here. Uh, there, uh, here they said that, okay, select an event in head-to-head -head results uh, to visualize the details, but uh, I, I was not sure uh, if I have to select uh, something from here. And uh, what I can offer is maybe uh, just like the uh, selection of the languages at the first page, uh, here we can have uh, maybe the last match, the details of the last match. And then when we select another game, we can see the others, other details because it's much better uh, to see uh, something uh, than to see nothing here. Uh, so uh, I guess the, the last match or maybe the first match, uh, I don't know how they can uh, think, how they will think, how the, the creator will think about the dashboard. Uh, because yes, when I uh, clicked on a game, on a match here, uh, by the way, this the same, uh, I'm not sure if I selected these because uh, in, in other programs, in other applications, uh, I guess the gray ones, uh, we can think that they are selected because the active one has no difference after I select it. Uh, when I select a match, then the unselected ones uh, start to appear different. So it makes me uh, consider that uh, it's like uh, I have selected four of the matches uh, with control, it's, uh, if I see these, this scene, I would think that these four were selected, not, uh, not the third one. And I guess these are all I can say for now. And it's also, uh, yes, I, I like the idea. I liked uh, what we have. I like the data. Because uh, I like football, but <laughs> uh, there are some uh, for sure processes uh, we can have about this dashboard. Thank you, Denise. Veronica, do you have uh, anything to add? Uh, there is not much to add, but uh, I would reconsider the. Um, everything that is uh, not chart itself. So there is a lot uh, happening. We have a background picture. We have some areas grayed out. We have some boxes with some gradients. So it's a lot to process and it's on, it only makes the, um, the data and the text less uh, visible, right? So I would remove it altogether. Um, and I, I think it would be for the better. Mm, the same for the headers. And um, I mean, there is a dark blue box. And I mean, it's a, a lot of to, to process. So I would reconsider that. But I like the, the consistency of the, the font and the, the icons. So this is nice. Um, yeah, but uh, as Dennis already said, uh, also um, be consistent with the lower cases and upper cases uh, will help. Um, and maybe the, the last thing, uh, also flags aren't the, the best way to show the, the country. Maybe here is good because we are only focusing on two, two countries, mm -hmm. but on the first page, I mean, it's like like a rainbow. So there is a background picture. Uh, there is uh, th there are many flags. Yep. Oh. 
Yeah, we have the flags here. 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 So, <laughs> and to be honest, I don't know if anyone can recognize all of the countries by the by the flag. Yeah, oh. I guess. Um, yes, I agree with you that this dashboard is uh, overloaded uh, with uh, shades, gradients, background images. And to be honest, uh, I I developed uh, the dashboard, uh, dashboard the same uh, way earlier, and uh, it, uh, due to the marketing goals, when you, for example, you speak at a conference, you uh, have like uh, great hard show, you need to attract uh, attention of your audience, like. The first impression, like wow effect, and of course uh, this dashboard looks outstanding if we we'll compare it with default Power BI dashboard. But uh, uh, when you go deeper, you understand that uh, all these elements uh, um, don't have any um, data explanatory or exploratory function. So and uh, all we come through this uh, process of understanding and uh, uh, decided that it's a visual noise. And for real, uh, if we talk about business dashboard, we always remove all these uh, unless elements uh, and uh, we work just with uh, titles, uh, some uh, legends, uh, some alignments, uh, blocks and if we will uh, so this dashboard looks uh, a bit overloaded but actually when we will remove all the images and all the flags we will understand that there's not there's not we will understand that there's not enough information yeah. not enough conclusions and uh, for example uh, we have a uh, significant pop-up window when uh, we hover the matches and uh, really i don't uh, see a need uh, for uh, this pop-up window this information uh, should be placed uh, and and the working area of this dashboard of course re-engineered uh, re-engineered rearranged and uh, um uh, for me, this this dashboard, in a in a sports sports terms, it's uh, it's playing his muscles, demonstrated he de demonstrating uh, his his abilities, but uh, uh, what Power BI here can do, what team of these developers, uh, I see that it, uh, it's a dash lab team, not uh, not a single uh, developer. And I understand that there are, there are a lot of efforts behind this single screen. And uh, yes, I see that these guys can, uh, can develop uh, beautiful dashboards, but uh, uh, we need savvy dashboards and uh, make uh, to add some some maybe maybe wisdom <laughs> for, to 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 win this award uh this uh, this dashboard uh should be not only strong but beautiful it uh, must be smart yes and I, I want to add one more sentence uh maybe as as, as a result uh background images they work very well for infographics but when we come to dashboards, uh, they are really so dangerous because uh, they can be uh, overloaded. They can be uh, really hard to load it, to be loaded. So um, I'm always uh, taking me away from, taking myself away from the background images. Yet, yes, uh, it comes with uh, its own interest. Uh, but I'm not sure if we have, uh, if you, if we should pay attention to the background image instead of the data inside of the dashboard. 
Yes, and uh, to remind, we uh, th that's why we uh, divide these uh, nominations for business dashboards and data storytelling. And yeah. uh, if we talk about storytelling, yes, it's it's well designed. There's no mistakes, and uh, I see the good job of designer. And it's just um, mm, our thoughts, our advices for for beginners, for developers who work with business audience uh, that uh, sometimes uh, such uh, images, such uh, designer uh, designer work, the designer job is uh, not helpful for business projects. Yes. But for storytelling, yes, it's okay. So in general, it's a great job, but uh, as I said, uh, it requires uh, more more analytics and yeah and and more stories or <laughs> yes okay so okay. thank you Let's... let me stop my share yes thank you for such detailed review and uh, pay attention for this all these significant details and let's um discover another one project uh from uh, different area it's uh, hr analytics so we uh, provided data set and uh, what we see it's a classic start page executive summary we are here uh, on the top of uh, this menu employees dashboard when i see like a summary about uh, each employee and uh, inside page and uh, so three pages and let's start for, for from executive summary uh, on top i see four indicators and uh, it's the well so i don't i will not pay uh i don't i will i will not criticize design so uh, we see uh, this sometimes like chunky layouts uh, uh, shades of course uh, this or some useless images like uh, bottom left corner or image inside the table which uh, disappear when I select any row mm, all these images of course are useless and it's uh, like a common mistake especially for a business dashboard and i will uh, not discuss it let's go deeper to the sense uh, for indicators for cards it's um, it's good so we have four key indicators total active uh, and uh, voluntary rate uh, involuntary and uh, but let's check. But these indicators, when I filter uh, any category, uh, they don't change their color. And uh, uh, actually it's just a um, distribution of our total. So we have 2007 active and it's 66% uh 88 voluntary 28 and involuntary um but if you put an indicator uh in your total it should uh, have like a range what is good what is bad uh and for example if i select any category and uh, there is a share of active employees is less less than 70 or less than 50 it uh, should change its color but uh, in this way uh, even if we have zero empty it uh, it doesn't work as uh, an indicator it's just a color it's uh, fi fixed color uh, number um next uh, performance so general general mistake that we need to put data labels and remove y axis and uh, color so in this case 
we have one measure number of employees. So one measure, one color. And uh, such bright colors, um, I think that, so it's not so critical because in general, uh, we have such light uh, color that but by but I would uh, switch to single color or maybe um, scale but uh, from maybe not so so bright colors uh, let's go but uh, also what I see uh, distribution but gender uh, but below also I see uh two indicators uh employee turnover and employee tur retention and uh, i'm a bit confused why these indicators are not on top why are they uh placed below gender pie chart or this recruitment sources uh, table and uh, my rule is we, that we always put total we put in total indicators on top and uh, it's a good approach uh, to explain so employee turnover the proportion of employees uh, who live during a period of time uh, but it's better to use like uh, information icon in the uh, use this uh, pop-up window uh, this uh, tool cheap uh, but not uh, take uh, the space uh, on our dashboard for all these uh, phrases. Uh, but in general, uh, according to uh, my base practice, we have first level with indicators, second level with visualization, which is uh, which looks uh, messy. We have a bright uh, bar chart with image. We have uh, Again, we have uh, total cards with some descriptions. And uh, below, we have a table with details uh, about each employee and uh, a short visualization of his satisfaction. But really, um, I think that it's not the best way to visualize uh, this satisfaction with stars. Uh, in my opinion, it's better to display five, four, uh, and uh, for example, is it a uh, percentage score of 5.1, 3.5, whatever. And uh, what also I see there, um, a left bar, and I expect that it's a list of another dashboards. And uh, when I press recruitment sources i just go to the same table which we have here but in a focus mode so all these uh, points in this menu it's not another one dashboard another one tabs or any detailization it's just the same as i press focus mode here and uh, but Really, I am disappointed because I see a list of these uh, blocks, and uh, uh, I go there. I expect to to find something new, but not just the not just zoom in uh, the existing visuals. And uh, let's go to the employee dashboard. Oh, maybe uh, I'll. Uh, Pause and ask your opinion. What would you improve at this screen? So, as you already said, the navigation is quite um, uh, complex and uh, not straightforward because uh, it's actually placed on the very top, right? Because uh, you switch between different views using the, the top uh, buttons and they should actually be put on, on the left side. So it would be more natural. But to add to what you already said, um, there is some color redundancy. So 
as we saw in, in previous uh, dashboards, right? For example, we are uh, encoding the, the category of employee performance, both with placement on, of the, on the chart. So we have separate bars, but also we are adding uh, colors to it. And uh, we are reusing the same color for, for example, fully meets and to encode that uh, there is, uh, I believe that the good result, right? That the, the percentage is high because it's uh, marked as, for example, in active employees is marked as the same green. And the same for uh, PIP is um, uh, colored with the same red as the employee turnover, which supposedly should be uh, showing the, the negative uh, uh, value and and the same for for gender right so it's like there is an inconsistency uh, and some redundancy as well um, second uh, and about the gender uh, female for blue and red for male we have here it's uh, it's also it should be considered again I guess yeah. we're going to use these ones. Yeah, if you're using the blue one, you use it with men, but yeah. Use it for male, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also maybe the, um, the visual hierarchy, because first of all, everything is very, very big, prominent, let's say. And uh, the font is, I would say, even too big. And um, because it's too big, there is no, you know, the, the, the hierarchy. So, um, for example, in the table, everything in my opinion, screams at you, right? So the, the, um, the letters are, are too big and drag your attention. And another thing, and this is also the, the design. A great phrase. <laughs> Sorry, great what? phrase. <laughs> I see that's a great phrase. phrase. <laughs> I will write it down. This therefore screams on you. Yeah. Uh, and the, the horizontal uh, scroll, is something that we should avoid. I mean, sometimes we cannot uh, squeeze everything into one uh, screen, so we can, uh, you know, scroll scroll it down. But the the horizontal scroll is big no no because, I mean, yeah, it, we should not do this, and especially that there is a enough space to to make it uh, to fit it into one screen. Um, yeah, so. I would stop here. Okay. Um, a few words from me, if you let me, Alex. Okay. Uh, you, you, told, you told that you're not going to be uh, talking about the design, but I'm going to say just a few uh, uh, words about it. Uh, we should really uh, be careful about the alignment uh, about usage of bold letters, about uh, usage of margins. And uh, what I see here, because they're all uh, should be considered again. And uh, about the color selection, uh, about the selected colors for the dashboard. Yes, I'm, I'm also not sure about uh, the colors selected. But also, uh, what we uh, try to find uh, for the colors in a dashboard, uh, okay, we, we try to find the, the good colors and also we try uh, to find the consistency because we see uh, the red here for the voluntary leave, uh, the comparison. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a negative value or if it's uh, 28, but it's it's a positive 28, but it's a negative, uh, it's an adverse uh, meaning. So uh, it's also uh, be considered again with the red. And also uh, we, we see the PIP red, we see the satisfaction red. I'm not sure if their meaning uh, should be uh, supported with red also. And uh, what I want to say, it's also uh, in a table, uh, as you, uh, Alex, also said, uh, in order to make it uh, read, read easily, uh, you can use some more gaps uh, 
between the columns because uh, when they are too tight when they are too close to each other then the reader uh, it's for the reader it's going to be hard to understand uh, which had header is uh, written for the which data below uh, so some using some gaps uh, would be so, uh, good and also uh, i will say something about the data uh, we see the comparison uh, for the bands uh, above, uh, like the active employees, voluntary leave and involuntary leave, where we, we see some ratios there, but we don't know what they are, uh, their meanings are. Or uh, for the employee turnover, uh, okay, we see the explanation uh, who leave during a period of time, but what's the time? Uh, is it the last month's turnover or is it the last year's turnover or the last week's turnover? Uh, instead of the explanation, we should see uh, what's the uh, duration uh, used in this dashboard and also in that data uh, specifically, I guess. That's all I can add for now. Yes, I totally agree with you. And uh, we have uh, uh, another two pages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so it, we had uh, the main pa uh, page and uh, let's uh, employ the dashboard. And uh, um, I'm a bit uh, confused uh, with this uh, uh, chaotic uh, set of cards of different size of uh, different uh, content and uh, really it's if we will go back and look at this table employee position status satisfaction and uh, oh, we have the same uh, categories some new some engagement uh, level uh, total year spent but I understand that when I will select a single person, yes, I have seen his number of uh, days of absence, year spans, number of project. But uh, what I expect to so to to visualize this data to help to to understand this data. But um, I look at this uh, mass cards and. Uh, they don't help me to find any correlations and uh, to understand the general picture. So I need to find uh, every single person, but uh, how to compare is his level of uh, engagement is, so where's the color indication? Is his uh, uh, engagement level higher or lower than average or some, uh, Mm, our uh, target value and really mm, this page uh, I even don't know should we uh, leave or delete delete this page because uh, it uh, really don't helps for me for example when, when we go to the lower level with uh, titles diversity job fain something else fully meets and the same insights uh, it's just a like powerpoint slide and uh, i expect uh, even we work with static uh, static uh, bullets with uh, conclusions i expect uh, the dashboard approach that we will, that we highlight key indicators use factoid or cards with uh, large number, with short description, with color indication, but it's just a bold text. And uh, really, I don't uh, understand uh, this. So I, I need to read all this text, but also um, I don't, uh, there is no work of vis data visualization. There is no a plain applying data visualization techniques to understand, to highlight these insights. That's my critics and uh, really 
I don't know how to be positive <laughs> and friendly uh, when we talk about uh, these two pages. So help me <laughs> to say something friendly. Uh, maybe I will start with something uh, neutral. So um, I would say that this is the um, design uh, mistake because, um, I mean, a part of layout, but the, the logic itself, we can select multiple uh, people, employees, right? So uh, if so, then we should provide the, the result as a table so we can have each row dedicated to each person to one person but if we provide an aggregated overview i mean th this is basically the aggregated overview then we should allow only single selection and no no possibility to select uh, all because then the the data doesn't make sense uh, 2000 years i mean maybe if we show average maybe this is better. So it's still true on the, the single person level, but um, I'm, it doesn't look uh, so weird uh, when we select all. And maybe the, the look and feel is, is not appropriate for the, for the purpose because I would assume that this is the business dashboard. So some um, two informal icons uh, are, are not suitable let's let's say that and maybe the, the the but this is the really small thing i mean if we are we as a analyst use the um, some generic uh, names like employee underscore name but this is not something that is useful for the end user so we should uh, make sure that this is not visible for them and use only relevant and meaningful uh, names for the for the business or the end user. Yeah, what I can add about the icons, yes, icon can be used. Icon can be used uh, for the data instead of the titles sometimes, yes. But uh, they should be really the most important part uh, of that uh, tab or of that uh, page. But here, what we have the icons for the gender, for the status, and for marital status. And I'm not sure if they are the most important part of this page. So, um, and also, uh, they will also be uh, changed with uh, what we call that uh, they should smell uh, as business, we call it in Turkish. So, uh, it would be better to find. Uh, a better working uh, icon set, I guess. Yes, I agree with you. So it's an example of uh, artistic, uh, artistic approach uh, to business there. But, and in general, uh, these mistakes are not so crucial. And uh, this, this dashboard also has a chance to, to win if uh, author will uh, apply um, all fix uh, all the mistakes mm -hmm. apply your advices and uh, really have uh, uh, like uh, cherry on top uh, not just uh, tables and charts but so continue use this approach but don't forget about logic and uh, when you uh, put a uh, name of employee on top of the list, don't put his department uh, on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. So we finished. Thank you very much for your time, for your experience, which you share uh, with our audience and uh, really uh, all your devices, uh, devices are very valuable and uh, thank you thank you very very much and uh, uh, in uh, two months we will uh, meet together at our Eurasian database conference in Istanbul and uh, our subscribers our participants will uh, list your talks and uh, 
join your workshop. So let's stay in touch and uh, uh, thank you all, all our subscribers and uh, let's let's meet in new streams and uh, prepare to the so we have deadline December 15 and you have time to improve your projects to apply a new project and to win this and to, to get our award uh, in February so let's continue and make your data speak thank Goodbye. you very much see you I'm waiting you all in Istanbul bye 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 <laughs>